that at all. Perfect. Okay. So welcome to this evening's Fertility Network UK information session. This webinar is on SANS Black and South Asian Communities Bereavement Support Services. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. I'd like to start by welcoming you all to this information session. I'm Jenny, the Ethnic Minorities Community Project Worker at Fertility Network UK. Part of the work of the Ethnic Minorities Community Project is to provide support, information and resources to people from ethnic minority communities who are affected by fertility issues. We want to provide safe spaces to discuss fertility issues for racially marginalized communities. Tonight, we have two bereavement support services officers who can tell us more about how SAN supports and works with people from Black and South Asian communities who are impacted by baby loss. Just to remind you that the webinar is being recorded and it will be available on our website and via our YouTube channel within say the next week or two. Please post any questions, reflections, and we'll answer as many as we can in the Q&A section. All our webinars are free, but we are a small charity and we rely on donations. So if you do feel able to make a donation to help us put these webinars on, we'll be really grateful. You can text to donate by texting FNUK and the amount you want to donate to 785. So for a one-off donation of five pounds, you can text FNUK5 to 785, or to donate three pounds, you would text FNUK3 to 785. Thank you so much in advance to anyone who feels able to do this, as it does make a real difference to us all. Please don't forget we are your charity and we are here for you. If you need support, we have groups across the country and some UK-wide groups that you can join. You can contact me, the Fertility Network UK Ethnic Minorities Community Project Worker. We also have a support line and information line that are open every weekday. So please don't hesitate to get in touch. Just before we start, it's important to include a well-being reminder for us all. Please note that the content of tonight's webinar can be triggering, so please do be aware of what you need to do to look after yourself during and after the webinar. Be mindful if you need to take a break or leave the webinar at any point. You're welcome to rejoin at any point should you wish to do so. Plus, the recording will be available for you to come back to later on. So now I'm pleased to hand over to our guest speakers for tonight. Hi, Patrice, and hi, Madhuri. If we could start, please, with your introductions. Hi, thank you so much, um, Jenny, for inviting us here. My name is Patrice, and I am a bereavement support services officer with a Black and Black British focus. Thank you, Jenny. Um, likewise, my name is Madri, and I work for SANS as a bereavement support services officer, as a bereavement support services officer with a South Asian focus. Okay, so I, sorry. So I believe now we're going to go into our presentation. Thank you, yes. Okay. So I'm just going to. Share my screen. So um, I'm going to start this, if I may. Um, so as we've mentioned, uh, Patrice and I are bereavement support services officers with SANS for, and our focus is on the Black and South Asian communities. Our vision is for a world where fewer babies die and when a baby does die, anyone affected receives the best possible care and support for as long as it is needed. So SANS have a mission, and this predominantly is to help save babies' lives, ensure excellent bereavement care for all those who need it, and to provide the right bereavement support for as long as it is needed.
So what do we do to achieve it? At the heart of the work, at the heart of our work is the support we provide to bereaved parents and families. We are here for anyone affected by pregnancy loss or the death of a baby whenever this happens and for as long as they need. This also includes those who are trying to conceive after loss and those who are undergoing fertility, fertility treatment and have experienced loss. Now, there are a number of ways that we offer support at SANS, and I just want to go through and share some of these with you. We have our helpline, which is open Monday to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and Tuesday to Thursday evenings from 6 till 9 p.m. And that is it is a safe space and a confidential space for anyone to talk about the loss of a baby. Some people prefer to email. Um, for support and so we have our email address helpline at sans.org.uk where again you can ask for um, information but also receive support after your loss. Um, we have Facebook groups and an online community um, which are a safe space for bereaved parents to connect with each other and share their feelings. We have local and online support groups which are usually run by our local groups are run by bereaved parents who become volunteers for SANS and could give you the chance to meet others and gain some support. We also have online groups and we have various online groups. Um, myself and Madri are going to talk later through the presentation about the tailored support groups for Black and South Asian communities. Um, we also have groups that are open to all and we have a specific group for dads as well. Um, we have SANS United football teams across the country, which are a unique way to for dads to come together um, through a shared level of sport to find a support network. Um, we have sibling resources on our website for children from ages three all the way up to teenage years. Um, and those are really, really nice, gentle resources to help. Um, children and young people explore their feelings and also learn how to make memories for their siblings. We have two booklets um, for those who were long ago bereaved. Um, things have changed, thankfully, um, in recent years, but for those who were long ago bereaved, oftentimes they weren't able to spend any time with their babies or they may not have known um, where their babies were placed, where their graves were. So we do have information booklets um, specifically for those groups of people. Um, and we also have memory boxes, <clears throat> which provide a special place for parents to store any memorable items or keepsakes they may have of their babies. So, SANS estimates that had stillbirth and neonatal death rates for Black and Asian babies been the same as for white babies, 432 fewer babies would have died in 2019 in England and Wales. Now, you know, we know that whenever we hear these numbers, these statistics, it's always heartbreaking. Um, and we also know, or what, what we want to share with you now, is that whilst those this, whilst those disparities are heartbreaking, it's also heartbreaking that um, the levels of support are also decreased for those from Black and South Asian communities as well. They are the least likely to access support, and that is why our roles were created at SANS. Through our roles, we're making support available and accessible to um, the South Asian and Black communities. And we want to share in this in this webinar how we're doing that. So I'm going to hand over to Madri now. Thank you. Thank you, Patrice. So um, as Patrice has said, you know, um, what, what our roles are for, um, both of us have been here uh, close to two years and we've made huge strides in that time. So I'm going to share with you now what what has sort of been done in that time. So anyone from the South Asian community will know that there is a lot of stigma and taboo attached to baby loss. Um, 
I myself have lost my my baby son and um I had things said to me knowingly or unknowingly but they were very painful and some of some of the things women get and sadly it's always the women who hear it but you are not a woman if you don't have children what's wrong with you how could this have happened why did you tell them about your miscarriage in our day we did not make such a fuss the deeds of your past life come back to you in this life if you cry your baby will not be at peace this happened because of nazo nazo is black magic it was not meant to be. It was God's will. This is just a small, small percentage of what women get to hear uh, on losing their baby. And for, for us, it's really important to sort of break that silence and enable people from the South Asian community, that's bereaved parents, families and the community to come to us for support. So how we've done that is we've created uh, a roundtable group who support our work. So that roundtable group has bereaved mothers in it. And there are women from the South, uh, sorry, from the Muslim, Sikh and um, Hindu community. And we are now working on creating a roundtable group for fathers as well. I've done a lot of outreach work with stakeholders, faith and community groups, because we find that with the South Asian community, a lot of people turn to faith which, which is very positive, as long as that faith then enables you to reach out for support when you when you need it. So we work with faith groups to ensure that they understand how important it is for mental well-being to, to reach out. When, when you're in a place of such darkness, when you've lost a baby and you can't share, you are filled with isolation, you are filled with loneliness, and that loneliness and isolation is the equivalent to 15 cigarettes a day to your health. So, you know, the impact it has on your health and well-being is just, it's tremendous. And it's really important that people reach out. So we now have, I mean, it, this is a whistle stop store, uh, tour of what we've done. But because of the impact of working with the roundtable group, stakeholders, faith and community groups, and the work Patrice and I have done, we have leaflets with QR codes that lead to a dedicated web page of support on, on um, Sam's web page. Um, so these leaflets we're hoping to share out, we've started to share out at hospitals, we're hoping to share out to uh, religious organizations such, such as Mandir's, um, temples and uh, Gudvaras and mosques um, and community groups. Um, and that takes you to the web page which, which has details of our monthly support groups, of webinars of how to get involved. There's a lot there. And we also have, as Patrice said, links to our bereavement support books in that have been translated into languages that people can understand. So just to quantify, to, to put in a measure of how this work that we're doing has helped, I wanted to, th this is the leaflet, by the way, that I was speaking about, but what I wanted to do is just read for you um, two messages to, that I've received, two quotes from, that I've received from parents, if I may. So the first one was received after we now hold South, uh, South Asian um, and Black support groups once uh, once a month for, for our different individual communities. So the first one was received after one of the support groups. And it says, I've read a bunch of books, listened to podcasts and joined webinars, support groups about baby loss. But I always had a niggling feeling that something was missing. I'm grateful to Sans for setting up the South Asian support group, which even in the first session went some way to fill the void in sharing the nuances of baby loss in our shared culture. And then in brackets, faith, extended family, community and shame. I sense my own experience was better reflected and felt more understood than I have until now. And this lady told me that she had been to so many groups, but she just didn't feel recognized. She didn't feel heard because how is somebody going to understand that? Oh, my mother-in-law said or chose, you know, it, it's a really different culture. So it really helped her. And you will remember Patrice had said about how people can get involved and 
Sand's journey is not just about us supporting people that come our way. Sands really tries hard. We try hard to ensure that we are working hand in hand. So this is from a lady who had joined one of our groups and now is a um, befriender and she holds the support groups with me on a monthly basis. Her husband too has been in webinars and he's done lots. So I'm just going to read this to you to show how, when support is ex extended, what it can become. I reached out to Sam's following a marketing message on Facebook asking for black a and Asian parents who experienced baby loss to attend a focus group in January, 2022. Following from that, Madhuri invited me to be part of the South Asian community, which I obliged. There was something about Madhuri where we both clicked after our first telephone conversation and immediately warmed to her and what she wanted to achieve within the South Asian community when it came to baby loss. We met in person, met with the BBC. I've now become training as a befriender, which is soon about to complete, and I should be co-hosting a support group with Madhuri as of next week. Since meeting Madhuri, my husband too has felt the confidence to speak about his loss. He featured on a podcast and is about to embark on the Snowden Midnight Climb in May, solo, which is definitely out of his comfort zone, but where he will be an amazing, it will be an amazing opportunity for him to speak to others about his grief. We have both gained so much from Sands. Not only do we feel recognized as Asian bereaved parents, but it's given us a purpose and now we want to do more in Jocelyn's legacy. I hope by being a befriender for Surrey Sands, I will be able to encourage other South Asian bereaved parents to come forward and speak about their long loss as it came to be as it can be extremely lonely. That just shows sort of the length of breadth of what can be achieved if somebody just wants to, you know, um, receive our services, our support, that's fine. But if somebody wants to also get involved, we, we also welcome that. Thank you so much, Madri, for sharing that. It's really, um, yeah, it was really good to to hear those quotes on the the impact of um, the work that's being done. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit about the work that we've doing we've been doing to support people from black backgrounds, and just to give a little bit of context to or background to um, why I started. Um, Sands conducted a survey with black mums up front in 2021 to find out the experiences of bereavement care, bereavement support for black families. And uh, uh, something that always sticks out um, from, from those results of, of that um, was this was this was the statistic that out of all the families, black families who were told about SANS, only 23% of those families, those mums or dads reached out for support. Um, and that number has always stuck to me. And I guess it, that has kind of informed, you know, the, the work that, we, that we're doing. Um, we want that number to increase. Um, and I not, don't want to really repeat what Madri has said. There's a lot of similarities in the outreach work we're doing. Um, but again, it was really important to find out what the barriers are for people to access support, what is preventing them? And we know that after experiencing a pregnancy or baby loss, one of the hardest things to do can be to reach out for support. It could be because of comments such as it is God's will um, that can come from the most well-meaning places, whether it's you know your, your church, your faith group, friends or family. Um, and with the best intentions, it can be a really difficult phrase to hear. Um, it could come from feeling like you have to be a strong black woman. Um, and that can be a feeling that you feel through so many different parts of your life, but it can also show up after you've experienced a loss. Um, for men, there's a fear that they're being seen or they will be seen as weak if they talk about their feelings. And there's that real sense that they have to man up. They have to kind of get on with it. They have to be the strong one which can also deter them from reaching out for support. Something else um, is 
not knowing what support is available. You know, there are many people who still don't know who SANS are and what we do. And there are also people who do want that culturally sensitive support. They want support from people who look like them or they don't want to be the only person that looks like them at a support group, which can also put them off reaching out for support. Once we kind of understood what those barriers were, and you know, we really, the way we understood what those barriers were was really by talking to parents. Um, so once we understood what those barriers were, our aim has been to, to reduce those barriers, to get rid of those barriers step by step. So again, similarly to what Madri has said, we hold monthly online support meetings for people from Black um, and Black British communities. We have our dedicated space on the SANS website. We have a web page which details all the support we offer. We have um, a leaflet which again details that support which we're sharing in you know in the commu in communities, community centres, hospitals with healthcare professionals again so people know about the support that's on offer. Um, we also have something that's very important is we have our parents round table as Madri has mentioned, hers, which is a group of parents who help to inform the work that we do. You know, we never just want this to be about what we think. We want the support systems we put in place to be guided by the parents' voice. Um, on the screen is a screenshot from a recording we did back in June um, for Father's Day. And it's two, two bereaved dads talking to a counsellor. Um, about their experience of loss. It's a video, I think it's so powerful um, to have two men talking about, you know, their experience, you know, their family, work, their own feelings, feeling alone, wanting support, not being sure if they want support. So I would encourage you, you know, if if you want to, you know, that video is on our on our SANS YouTube page. Um, and we found it's been another way to offer support for people who might not want to or feel ready yet to attend a support meeting. So what's next? We want to absolutely continue um, our support meetings, our roundtable groups and our webinars. Our webinars will always be on different topics that we feel are relevant or um, topics that fit in with something that's happened or specific times of the year. Um, want to increase awareness of the support that we offer. So as I said, you know, we may think we have the best support on offer, but it's of no use if people don't know it's there. So we want to continue doing things like this and reaching out in as many places as possible so people know that we are there to support them. We want to collaborate with stakeholders, different organisations, black owned organisations and charities and individuals who are already supporting and continue to support those in black communities from black backgrounds who've been affected by loss. We are supporting the training team as they develop training in cultural awareness. We also recognize that it's important that we increase the relatability of the charity um, on our social media, on our website. You know, it's important that people see themselves in the support that they're reaching out to. Um, in the future, I hope to offer in-person support, whether that's, um, and this has not been finalized, but that, that could take, the form of one-off um, gatherings or regular support meetings. And we definitely want to continue to listen to parents, to learn um, from them. You know, we, as, as we, as I said in the beginning, you know, a very small amount of, you know, people from the black community were coming to us for support and we need to continue to listen and to learn why so we can make those changes. So as Madri said, that is kind of a whistle stop 
you know, tour description of the support that we have to offer. And at this time, you know, we are more than happy to answer any questions. And if for those that are listening later on, the QR codes that have been on the presentation, you know, if you use those, um, if you scan those, you will be taken to the dedicated pages um, on the SANS website where you can also get in touch with us at a later date if you would like to ask any questions or receive support. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, both Madiri and uh, Patrice for that. It was really excellent to hear about the holistic and innovative ways, if I can say the word, of um, supporting the different communities there. Um, I had no idea that there was a, a football a football yeah. team, which just sounds like a really great way to, to provide peer support, um, particularly for men within our communities who may find it difficult to, to access yeah. the conventional sort of talking or or sitting around a table um, forms of support so it's really great and to hear about how you're also supporting um, not just the mothers and fathers and, and parents but mm -hmm. the the loved ones the siblings yeah. who are impacted by baby loss as much as you know in, in different mm -hmm. ways but as much as the the mothers fathers and parents so um, it's a resource that many of our community many of the members of Fertility Network UK um, would really benefit from. And so it's really great to be able to share your, your resources um, widely so that people can access the support and they don't need to be alone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we're gonna come to the point where we've got some questions. Um, I'm just gonna bring that up in the chat section. If anyone else has some further questions please do put them in the chat at this point and we'll try to answer them as much as possible. So the first question we have here is why is it particularly important to have specialised support for Black and South Asian communities when it comes to dealing with bereavement and grief and either of you or both of you can answer that. Thank you, yeah, um, so we know that everyone's experience of grief is unique, um, but we also know that there are common themes for the Black community or the South Asian community and being able to come together with other people who understand those and maybe you don't have to explain those, those things too, can create an extra sense of comfort and safety. So this can be around your faith, it can be family, it can be cultural practices, the way you grieve. Um, it can be, sometimes it can be draining to, to have to explain, and it can be a bit hurtful if you're not understood straight away. And even though, you know, that lack of understanding probably isn't coming from a a negative space it can it can still be difficult for that person to not feel understood um and we also know that a huge um issue is the disparities that are faced in the black and south asian communities and this is often due to racism or bias and so again being with people from your community from your culture can give that added sense of safety um where you again dur during your hospital experience if your care hasn't been as you liked and um, if you feel like you have experienced racism or, or bias being around people that you feel safe around can provide that extra comfort and help you to feel more comfortable to to speak to share your experience and to keep on going back for support Absolutely. And um, something that you mentioned on, you know, some key um, points there in regards to the disparities, but also how you're treated, you know, mm. when you are a bereaved um, person, you had experienced baby loss and that sometimes the biases can mean of health professionals, you know, can mean that you're not offered the same level of support actually you know it may not be that you're even offered bereavement support services or felt that 
been seen as needing it because yeah. you're because you're from a, a black or Asian community. So that then brings up questions for people around how they're supposed to grieve, you know, and if they yeah. actually should be accessing support when of course, yes, absolutely yeah. they, they should, but the, it's the awareness of the the, the um, uh, professionals to, yeah. to, to be able to know that it, it's available and it should be made accessible for everybody. Mm. Just following on from, some of the things you mentioned I wondered about um if either of you what your observations had been around how um men grieve differently differently to 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 women and 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 other genders as well have you seen any um differences um I if I pick that up with, um I've just held a webinar close to Father's Day for six bereaved um uh, fathers from the South Asian community um, and they do totally grieve differently because, as Patrice said, there's that man up thing in both of our cultures. There's that man up thing. And they immediately go into the mode of I've got to look after my wife. I've got to look after my family with South Asian communities. It's more often than not, it's an extended family Um and you don't marry just that person. You marry that extended family. So they go into, I have to support my wife, I have to support the extended family, um, and that, you know, I need to arrange the funeral, I need to do this, I need to do that. They don't give themselves time to actually pause because they're not enabled to grieve. Um, as our community, we're not enabled, especially men are not able to, to grieve. And it was so interesting. Um, and this webinar is on our on our website so interesting the things that they said and what was said to them by the community by their own families when they did show signs of what was seen as weakness but it's not weakness it's grief um so I think we talk about we talk about the healthcare profession and how they they treat um people who are in grief but we also need to look at how our own our nearest and dearest look and treat they need to just listen they need to just sit and listen because as Patrice said sometimes things are not said with any malice but it's the wrong thing it's you know I had said to me what you do in your past life that quote came from me but I it's a it's a terrible thing to hear um and I think men do get that not not the quotes that I shared but the be strong be strong no, I think that goes to men and that makes them grieve differently. Thank you so much for sharing um, that, that in this session, you know, the personal comment. And I can imagine the the pain, you know, of, of when you already have gone through a traumatic experience and hearing unhelpful words, you know, to that to that effect that that can have on your your journey when you are grieving and your experience. And you touched on very important points about how the community responds, you know, our families to people that are grieving baby loss and some of the unhelpful messages and narratives that can exist within the communities that um, can be challenged and should be challenged and to, to, for conversations like this, you know, and all the work that you're doing to show that it's important to provide those safe spaces, but it's also okay to to grieve it's actually okay to pause whether you're male female or or any other gender you know um a natural response to a traumatic event you know a life event um it's important that we as a community or in our within our communities provide spaces and recognize that thank you so we'll just bring up another question that we have here um and again, it's um, looking at the, the sort of culturally specific consideration. So what would you say those are? What do you take into account when you're providing the support services for Black and South Asian individuals? Okay, should I go, Patrice? Yeah. Uh, so if I can say, you know, with the South Asian community, we support people of many South Asian community there's a, a lot of different communities that fall under that banner 
So we provide support for Hindu, Sikhs, Muslims, and they all, uh, our faith and culture is quite entwined in everything we do. I think that's similar actually for a lot of the black community. So when we provide support, we have to we have to think, we have to take into account those cultural considerations. I mean, when I'm maybe a little thing for somebody, but for the Muslim community, when I'm holding a uh, support group and they're talking about faith as an example, and they talk about Muhammad, who's their prophet, I will always say peace be upon him. Um, which maybe somebody who's not from the South Asian background wouldn't wouldn't know. But for me, it's really, really important to respect every aspect of what they bring into that, be it their faith or their culture. And a big consideration is never to judge. Mm -hmm. For both Patrice and I, never judge. We come across so many different scenarios. And... You know, I remember when I went to um, a support group, I was the only South Asian person there. And this was actually a sand support group 20 years ago. And although I was there to get support, I felt really isolated because it was just me. And when I was talking about my culture and how, you know, I was expected to mourn, I saw people looking at me like, and it wasn't their fault. It's just because it was very different for them. You know, it's it's a very different culture. And they were like, really, really? And that didn't help me. So never, ever to judge. And and, and to know things like a Muslim child will be buried, you know, on the first day. Uh, Hindus generally are cremated, but children, babies, are seen as pure and they are cremated up, up until a certain age. <clears throat> Knowing those things are really, really important. Just understanding when an email comes through and it says anything about culture, totally understanding and being able to reflect on that in the right way. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what I would say as well, is being respectful, being understanding, being willing to learn. Um, because as Marjorie said, it's the same, you know, not everyone from black communities are the same you know everyone is diverse and even within the same faiths you know that doesn't mean everyone will grieve in the same way that doesn't mean everyone's family is in this, is the same so it's about allowing people to come with their whole self without judgment without fear and just knowing that they will receive understanding um i always say it's impossible to know everything about everyone that you can be understanding and then you can, depending on the circumstance, ask if you're unsure about something, but also you can go away and learn yourself so that the next time that person is there, you can, they, they can see, oh, this person has gone away. They've found out they're trying to understand me more. And I think that's the biggest thing is when someone can see, okay, they might not know but they all they understand the difference because I think the worst thing to do is when that difference, whatever it is, feels ignored. So for it to be acknowledged and then if that person needs to go away and do whatever research they need to do, they can do that and then come back so they can offer better, better support. And yeah, that that is what we are. We are trying to do. Fantastic. So you've both mentioned really um, practical ways and important ways that um, somebody can feel a sense of belonging, actually, as well as, you know, being being supported, but having those um, cultural um, factors and considerations um, for the health professionals and the people providing support to be aware of them and and how that can increase feelings of safety. For, for people from ethnic minority backgrounds and hearing about how you involve the, the people that you work with in terms of co-production, I imagine has a, a massive impact on, on that because you're hearing directly from the people that use your services and involving them as well. So that's also an important point. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. Um, let's come to the next question then. Um, and what we've got here, um, 
Are there any specific traditions or rituals that, that you have found particularly important to incorporate into your support services? Um, should I? Yeah, my dream. Um, no, I think it's, again, it's all about listening. It's all because we don't incorporate the, the rituals in our support services but we enable them to speak about the rituals. We enable them to tell us about what happened. And within majority are actually rituals. They are things that they speak about. And we may say, well, actually we thought, um, and you can do it this way, you know, because like I was saying to you as an example, um, where Hindu babies are, uh, are buried because they're seen as pure. And once again, I'll just bring this back to me because my baby was buried. I was too lost in grief to know any different. But now, because burial to me is a very alien thing, we cremate. Not a day goes by that I think, why did I do that? Why did I do that? And if I had had an informed choice at that time, that would have been really beneficial to me. But I was just told, this is what happens. So we are looking at a doing a some type of booklet for the South Asian community that has all the rituals within that. So it says this is what can happen, but this is not what you have to do. So if we can have that within the hospitals, within funeral homes, that will be that will give parents a really informed choice which I think right now in your grief, you don't have that. You are just told it, it's this way. So that's something that we're really dedicated to and hope hope to, to do. Mm -hmm. Having those um, options um, laid out to you and being able to choose differently if you need yeah. to and what's right for, for you, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if there anything, um, any rituals that you've... Um, seen or, or involved in in support for the black community um patrice i would give a similar answer to madri in that we kind of we don't suggest any but we allow parents to talk about what they have done or what they find comfort in doing um and i found it to be quite broad um for people that do have a faith for people that don't have faith um memory making is a huge thing um I, I think that once parents feel like whether that's they feel like it because it's just there in them whether they're kind of um, encouraged by their children whether it's seeing someone else once they know that they can um they're allowed to grieve openly and don't have to stay silent. You know, I see more and more parents celebrating their babies and keeping their memory alive, whether that's their birthdays, Mother's Day, um, just because I, I've seen how important that is, is keeping, you know, their memory there um, and, and, not being afraid to to talk about their baby and and I think that's something that I'm seeing um I feel like it's a shift not I'm not saying it's anything to do with us being in this post but I think you know before it was lost with something that wasn't spoken about um but now more and more people are talking about it and are making memories and continuing to to honor their babies that's really very, very um beautiful to, to think about those memories being created from painful experiences. Yeah. Um I can think of um having the ashes of 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 my baby um put in a um it was a heart-shaped um urn and mm -hmm. it had an inscription on it. And so, you know, it's a way that my baby can always be present with mm -hmm. me and, and to have that memory. Um, and so really helpful with the, the grieving process I yeah. found. But of course, it's going to be um, different for, for different people. Yeah. In terms of the 
the, the, the groups and the environment, because um, we're talking about people at one of the most vulnerable times in their lives, you know, coming to your services. And what other strategies and what sort of ways do you make that environment um, safe and, and supportive? Some of it you've you've touched on, you've touched on, but the ways that people feel that they can talk about their grief and their emotions and their feelings. Yeah, I think, you know, we always start off with, or um, I'm gonna speak for Madri, she can share after, but, you know, I always like to start off with just a, a reminder that this is a safe space for everyone. You know, everyone's experience of loss will be different. Um, and that, you know, we should always try and be as respectful and, and as understanding as possible. Um, people may have made decisions that another parent wouldn't have made, but, you know, we have to be respectful. Um, everything said in the sessions is confidential. Um, we, we say that we would, it's, you know, always nice to see the person's face, but they don't have to turn their cameras on. If someone doesn't want to talk, they don't have to talk. If someone just wants to listen, that's okay. Um, we let them know that, you know, the session is for a set amount of time, but you are, you know, if you need to leave, if you need to step away, you know, do absolutely what's right for you. Um, we let them know that there are, is ongoing support. So the meeting happens, the support meetings happen once a month, but, um, you know, the helpline is there that they can call, you know, throughout the week if they need to. Um, yeah, and we just, I think those are, those are some of the things that come to mind of how we just try to ensure that it's a safe space. Um, and the meetings are a good, a good meeting for me. You know, I'm happy to talk. The colleague that I run the meeting with is happy to talk, but really it's a space for parents to talk to each other and to support each other. So, um, yeah, that's, I was going to say, you know, a good meeting for me is when I don't really talk a lot and, and they are able to support each other, ask each other questions, you know, that, that is, you know, what, what we're trying to create that support system for them. So yeah, it's safety and well-being is always at the forefront of, of how we run the meetings. Excellent. And it's um, really refreshing and um, remarkable to hear about how many men are actually accessing your, your services and um, being a vital part in shaping, you know, the support that is available to men from Black and, and South Asian communities. I mean, that we would assume that you've, you've got enough men to have a football team. I keep on coming back to the football <laughs> team, but you to actually have one, you need enough men. And so that's a a massive positive um you know thing to be able to offer um what would you say in reference to the men and the support that you provide how have you been able to to encourage that 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 engagement on, and participation within the communities uh, so the the support that you're talking about the sounds united that we have we have many I think it's a hundred I uh, think teams we have a lot of teams though um, and we notice now there are more black and South Asian people men joining those teams and that can be fathers who do not play football at all or they're really good at it or they're mediocre it's just a place for them to come together and it's really lovely because each shirt at the back has their child's name or however if they hadn't named a child, however, they chose to refer to that child. So it's a place where men can just have real camaraderie. But I've noticed in our support group, we had, um, I've never had men come on their own, but we've, we have couples that have attended. And one had lost their child only four days before. And that spoke volumes to me. And then we had a couple attend from Texas and we had a couple attend from India. So we're also having people attend from different places throughout the world. Um, and that shows how important these support groups are. Um, and when I was doing the webinar that was for fathers, 
we had our panel of five fathers and then we were we received uh, an email from a counsellor from Birmingham who said I've read this I've lost my child and I'd really like to be involved and that was really uh, not refreshing but it was so important for us it validated what we were doing so we're seeing that a lot now where they are approaching us also fantastic it sounds like very empowering work that you're you're doing there um i would add that i've i've tried to um include men or the male the dad's voice in everything that that i do as much as possible so um for for webinars you know there'll always be at least one male um panel member um our round table you know you want there to be you know there'll be at least one dad if not more there um the father's day um recording that we did was really um inspired by a report that sans did i can't remember the the name of the report but it was it came out last year that said that for men sometimes they find it easier to access support on social media um, and and I, I kind of took that as maybe that's the first step. So maybe for women, it's easier for them to go to a support meeting, but maybe the first step for a man would be to, to be able to access it easily without having to talk to anyone. And that's really why I wanted to do the Father's Day video because it's just there. They can watch it whenever they're, they're ready. There's no pressure. They can pause. They can come back to it. Um, but it was, you know, again, just having three men talk about loss I found it so powerful and it's it's such a beautiful video and yeah moving forward I'm always considerate of our is this accessible to men um I think naturally without thinking about it a lot of support is tailored to women it's not on purpose but I think men grieve differently men have different barriers and actually it's so hard for men because it's like, what are we, what are they supposed to do? We, they're told they have to be strong, but then they're told, why aren't you showing your emotions? And then if they show their emotions, they're told they're being too emotional and they usually will have to return to work quicker. Um, they usually are the ones who are the fixers, not always the case, but you know, want to make everything better. So I feel like men are just in a really, difficult position when it comes to grieving and so in the support we're offering I, I just want them to know that this is for you too you know I, I'm thankful that it's worked out that the person I run the support meetings with is also a male um, so there's both of us there and, and, and I think you know that is a little thing that, that will help as well and he has um, you know it's his mission just himself to to get more people to come to Sands for support as well so yeah just trying to ensure that in everything we do um we're thinking is this accessible for men is this accessible for dads it's brilliant I, because go ahead no that's fine sorry I just wanted to add to what Patrice is saying the other thing we have noticed is through the sharing of our webinars for for you know with the men all through the support groups and everything we do we've not only just encouraged and enabled communities to understand but we've, been, we've encouraged and enabled both husband wife or partners to understand mm. one yes one another's grief journey and that's been said a lot and that that yeah. is really really something yeah. yeah I would sorry to just add I'll completely agree that it, that takes me to a webinar, our first webinar, where a dad shared his experience and so many people found it helpful because they were just like, we didn't know, we don't know that that's, that could be yeah. what he's thinking. Or maybe that's, maybe that's why so many people found it, you know, so helpful that he was just being so open in, in what he was feeling. And so I definitely agree with Madri with that as well. Yeah. And thinking about the the strain, you know, the the impact on relationships for those that are in relationships or those that have um a, a partner of, of of you know whatever gender it may be, mm. um, but some understanding then yeah. of of how the other person 
um, can be very helpful for the relationship, mm -hmm. in fact. Um, and what we're strongly hearing and the message, I think, the definite takeaway is that men are not forgotten, you know, yeah. <laughs> in this. Mm -hmm. And it's important and necessary for, for them to access support. Um, thinking about the accessibility, you spoke about providing um, the leaflets in different languages. And for people whose language, first language isn't English, uh, who you spoke about some people attending from India and, you know, maybe that they um, speak other languages um, or they maybe um, have accessibility needs. Um, for instance, uh, if people are deaf or hard of hearing, um, what 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 support or how do you um, provide sort of accessible um, support for, for people in those situations? So I, sorry, Patrice, you no, go ahead. No, sorry, sorry, you go. I was just going to say that I speak Hindi, Urdu and Punjabi. Um, so if anyone needs to speak to me in a language that they are comfortable with, um, I'm always, always happy to do that. We do have a translation service as well. Mm -hmm for a number of uh, languages, but I'm always, always happy to do that. Um, and on occasion I have, I have done that. Uh, not so much in a support group, it hasn't been needed, but you do find in a support group, words will come out, you know, you kind of feel flitter in both, you know, in, in languages. Um, and if I'm honest, I don't know what we do about the, hard of hearing or do you know Patrice I, I, I'm, I'm not, not sure yeah um, you can look into yeah that's definitely something you can look into and I know that we do have easy read chapters yeah. of our bereavement support book as well um, but we definitely recognize that there's more that we can be doing yeah. um, and it's definitely something that we are working on which is such a cliche phrase because you can say we're working on it and that that can sometimes feel like it's a get out clause, but I would say we are genuinely working on making our services accessible. And whilst you know my fo focus work is with the black community, Madras is with the South Asian, we know that those aren't, you know, the only two ways that, you know, we make SANS more inclusive. There are so many other ways as well. So it is definitely something that we're, we're mindful of and working towards. And I guess that's something for us to go away so we can answer next time yeah. um, for, for the hard of hearing question, definitely. And all the webinars we're speaking about, they're all on our um, webpage, if anyone wishes yeah. to access them, or if they have any questions, all our contact details are on them, um, as are they are on the QR code also. Great, so having, you know, videos as well, you know, that's a fantastic way for people to be able to um, either try have them translated or mm -hmm. have a, a description on there, you know, um, if they have um, accessibility needs. And it's really um, demonstrated in the work that you've been doing so far in terms of, you know, wanting to bring in the cultural humility, but also the inclusiveness. So I think it sort of speaks for itself, to be honest. And as you said, it's a it's a work in progress with many of these things. So you know, kudos to you. And there's more work to be done. Absolutely. Um, we've come to time, so I just wanted to um, invite you both to, if you have any sort of closing statements or any last thoughts that you'd like to share before we close for tonight. I would just say thank you to you, Jenny, um, for inviting us. You know, we're really glad we've had the opportunity to share about SANS. Um, and also I would just add that, you know, as we've said, please do reach out to us for either, you know, to find out more about what we do, if you would like support. And also if you would like to be part of offering support, you know, something that I found which is amazing and heartwarming is the amount of parents that despite their experience, despite their grief, also want to support other parents. So if for any of those reasons, you know, you want to reach out, you have suggestions for us, you know, we are more than happy to, to hear from you. So please do get in touch with us. And uh, likewise, Jenny, thank you so much. Without 
organizations such as yourself, we wouldn't be here today. It's through the joining of hands and offering sort of wider support. It, that's what makes a difference. So thank you for your bravery as well in, in doing what you do. And, uh, you know, we really appreciate it and really, really welcome this this webinar. And, you know, Baby Loss Awareness Week is soon upon us. So if anyone wants to be involved, we have many ways that are going to be shared on our website on how you can be involved. So, yeah, please do look out for that. And we look forward to seeing you again soon, Jenny. Thank you. Great. So we'll be sharing the resources, um, a sign pit posting um anyone to SANS should they need um, bereavement support services um, but likewise a big thank you to to both of you our wonderful speakers uh, Patrice and Madhuri. Um apologies if I've been repeatedly mispronouncing your name um, and um, no but it's been a pleasure to have you both here to talk about a very difficult subject um, but I'm I know that many people will um, take away a lot from this so thank you for being with us tonight we've come to time um it's really important that we continue to talk about baby loss and fertility issues within our communities and how people are impacted in different ways so we want to thank you for joining us and um whether you are watching this live or on the youtube channel please know that you are not alone Please don't also forget that we're your charity and we are here for you. If you need support, we have groups across the country. We have a black women's group. We have a Muslim women's group. We also have a South Asian um, group. Um, you can contact me, the Ethnic Minorities Community Project Worker. Um, we have a support line and information line, as I mentioned before. You can also contact us via our socials on Facebook and Instagram and we look forward to connecting with you. And you've heard about the amazing resources available via SANS, so please do get in touch with them for further support too. So just want to wish you all well and take care and best wishes. See you again soon.